If I were to live as long as the average British male today, I would have just about four more years to go, at which I find a sobering thought. And before the brethren start eagerly eyeing my books and my snazzy wardrobe, I can't guarantee to die, though. But we must all face our mortality. Some of us are going to die soon, and others will die even sooner. Arguably, human culture began as our ancestors faced up to the inevitability of death. And we can hide from our death by pretending that the present will endure forever. There will always be another pill, another operation, some rejuvenating diet that will delay death. If we close our eyes, it will go away. Or we may feel so haunted by death that we wonder whether our life is, a, as Macbeth said, a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury signifying nothing. But today's feast, Feast of the Transfiguration, offers us another way, how to look at death with hope. Jesus has told his disciples time and again that he is going to suffer and that he will die, but he will rise again. But they don't want to hear. Just before today's reading, Jesus had told them again, and Peter rebuked him, God forbid that this should happen to you. So faced with his death, his suffering, they stick their fingers in their ears. So Jesus takes them up the mountain, is transfigured in their sight, and even then Peter refuses to get the message. He wants to build tents so they can settle down forever, freeze the moment, stop the journey, and then there is the voice from heaven, listen to him. Listen to him. He is going to die, but he will rise. And how we see the future casts light and darkness on how we live now. In that wonderful 1960s film, The Graduate, Mr. Robinson tells the young Dustin Hoffman, I have seen the future, and it is plastic. <laughs> 75 years ago today, the first atomic bomb destroyed Hiroshima. I was born a few days later, and all of my childhood was overshadowed by the expectation that we would all be killed in nuclear war. Today, young people live up, grow up, with the expectation of an ecological crisis that could wipe out humanity. And in this time of COVID, this pandemic, we live day by day without any clear sense of what the future is. We can deny these threats like the disciples on the way to Jerusalem. We can stick our fingers in our ears. But in the transfiguration, the Lord gives us a glimpse of the future, and it is of glory. So all that we do and live now is in the light of the glory that is to come. St. Catherine of Siena said, all the way to heaven is heaven. Not quite my experience, but then I'm not a saint. And so if we listen to him, we can go down the mountain, we can walk to whatever Jerusalems await us. We can face our mortality. We can face the threats to our little planet with open eyes and not be paralyzed. 
In 1939, Dorothy Day felt completely overwhelmed by trouble. She couldn't pay the bills for a Catholic worker. She couldn't feed the thousands of people that came every day for soup. And she was on the point of sort of despair. And then she said, a tremendous sense of the glory of being a child of God swept over me, a joyous sense of my own importance. The glory of being a child of God. And so she bent to the tasks of the day. We rarely ascend the mountain and see the transfigured Lord. But if we listen to him, we shall see each other transfigured. We are all now future citizens of the kingdom, in the words of Nicholas Boyle. The homeless person on the road is a future citizen of the kingdom. The person at the checkout desk or somebody who shouts at you in road rage, even your own children, they are all future citizens of the kingdom. Imagine a couple expecting a baby. They decorate the baby's room. They knit the tiny socks. They buy the pram. Their lives are shaped by the one who is to come. Already, the twosome is becoming a threesome. And like them, our lives may now be shaped by the one who is to come.